Public debt and debt sensitivity risks are rising everywhere, and this trend has accelerated because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The debt being piled up is also changing compositions as a growing stock of debt is held domestically. As this share grows, whether and how to restructure domestic debt is a question for a lot of policymakers. I'm Tom Onassan from the IMF Strategy Policy Review Department. And I'm Trevor Lessall from the IMF's Monetary and Capital Markets Department. Restructuring public debt is like performing surgery. You only do it if you must, and you avoid it when you might do more harm than good. Over the past two decades, low-income and emerging market economies have seen their share of public domestic debt, let's just call it domestic debt for short, increase from about a third to roughly half of total public debt. These debt levels are expected to stay high over the medium term, creating strong linkages between the government and the domestic financial sector. We should note that a rising share of domestic debt is not necessarily a bad thing. When deployed productively, the increased borrowing capacity can reduce currency risks and can contribute to long-term growth. However, the recent increase in domestic debt has come at the same time with debt risk has risen significantly, especially for low-income countries. Consequently, it is now more likely that domestic liabilities will need to be a part of the government debt destruction plan. We are part of the team at the IMF that put together in-depth studies of the issue the government needs to consider when restructuring domestic debt. Our work draws on over the 40 years of government debt destructuring to offer insights and lessons on how to restructure domestic debt, what to watch out for, and how government can prepare. To date, almost all the analytical work in IMF policy on sovereign debt restructuring has focused on the implications of restructuring external debt. But domestic debt is different in terms of who owns it and the potential effects on the domestic economy and the financial system. We classify debt as domestic if they have been issued under the legal jurisdiction of the government, rather than in a foreign jurisdiction. Domestic debt is usually in local currency and mostly held by local creditors, such as banks, pension funds, and even individual citizens. A domestic debt restructuring may be easier to conclude because of the country's sovereign legal advantage. Countries can simply alter the terms of debt contracts in their favor by changing domestic law. However, the authorities need to think carefully when considering legal change and the way to restructure debt. This is because such a move can undermine investor confidence, financial stabilities, and potentially leads to long-term scarring of the financial sector. There is also real risk of litigations on the long legal battle. What we have found is that countries who opted for restructuring only domestic debt tend to have lower level external debt held by private creditors, and also relatively shadow financial systems with low capacities to transmit stress to the rest of the economy. In the pursuit of restoring sustainability, the key question to ask is whether restructuring domestic debt will do more harm than good. In other words, can the objectives of the restructuring be achieved when accounting for the broader costs of securing that debt relief? We call this the net benefit of a domestic debt restructuring, whereby potential costs, such as the costs associated with providing emergency support to the financial sector, are netted out. The next question is which debt to be included in the restructuring? This is a parameter of the debt that we restructure, and it is often much harder to establish for domestic debt restructuring. Generally, it is best to cast a net wide and be clear and transparent about the selection process. The restructuring should also include the strategies on how to engage creditor transparently. Present the debt exchange as a part of the broader plans to restore the sustainabilities and the growth. A part of this plan is convincing creditors to participate in a debt exchange to restore sustainability. Once a decision has been made to restructure, policymakers should try to anticipate the effects on the economy and financial system, devise mitigation policies, and determine where support might be needed. For example, the government may be required to recapitalize banks, including the central bank, to safeguard the system. The lesson here is that policy action should be timely and targeted. Laws should be recognized early and the pairs with a strategy to safeguard financial stabilities. Above all, do it right the first time. To return to our analogy of restructuring domestic debt and surgery, there will be pain no matter what. But if it's done right the first time, the wounds will heal and the recovery will be faster. <laughs>